Hey everyone and welcome. In all of my recent videos, I've been using a wave clear advantage to carry me through lane. But now I want to show you guys the other side. How to win versus someone who has more wave clear than you. The gameplay I'll be using will be from one of my own high elo solo queue games from Master Tier where I'm playing Syndra vs Ari. The concepts we'll learn will apply to any mid laner with less wave clear than Ari, for example, Syndra, Cassiopeia, Victor, or LeBlanc. As always, before getting into the gameplay, let's jump into analysis. Syndra is a control mage versus Ari, who's an assassin, even though Syndra can basically be in an assassin in laning phase with her ult. Meaning this lane is very snowbally because both champions can 100 to 0 each other. Ari is more wave clear than Syndra since she can hit all 6 minions with one spell, where Syndra would have to use a lot more abilities and mana to push just as fast, and they have equal range. One of the most important parts of this matchup is that Syndra's abilities are a lot easier to land, making her harass much more reliable. And since high elo Aries know that their Q and Charm are easy to dodge early game, they use their Q to hard push every wave so they can have early lane pressure. Knowing this, we can create a game plan to counter that strategy. Mission 1. Harass Ari every time she goes to CS, especially when her Q is down. I know Ari is going to be spamming her Q on the wave, so every time her Q is down, that gives me a window to trade without being in any danger. Mission 2. Use my health lead from Mission 1 to start pushing and pressuring. Once I have a big enough health lead, it's too dangerous for Ari to keep pushing without dying to ganks or just dying to me, so it prevents her from spamming Q and pushing me into tower, which is Ari's biggest advantage in this matchup. Mission 3. Don't die to ganks. Since this is basically an assassin versus assassin matchup for laning, not dying to jungler ganks is even more important than usual. And unfortunately for me, the enemy jungler is Zac, who is notorious for how well he can gank mid, so I will need to track the jungler throughout laning phase and ward properly. Mission 4. Use my health lead or experience lead for a level 6 all in. If the lane is even, I should have a health advantage since Arya will be pushing and I will be harassing, so when we both hit level 6, I can kill her if I land a stun. If I'm ahead, I can easily catch her by getting level 6 before her and surprising her with an all in. Alright, let's move on to the gameplay. So as soon as the minions touch, I'm looking to use a Q as soon as possible because I have full mana, and having full mana is essentially a waste of mana because I'm not using my mana regen. So I wait for Ari to walk up and use her Q on the wave and hit her with my own Q. A little trick I'm using here is that I'm standing in the middle of all my minions to guarantee Ari uses her Q right where I'm standing so I can easily sidestep it since she would love to hit me and my minions with one Q. Since we both used our Qs at the same time and I know my Q cooldown is 3 seconds shorter than hers, I can walk up and start mission 1 by using my Q on her when she goes for this minion. Now her Q is coming back up, so I walk out of range of it and she uses it on the minion wave as expected. Now I have another 7 second window to punish her for every CS she goes for. So just like before, when she walks up to last at this minion, I hit her with another Q. Now this next Q is a little more advanced and is Syndra specific, but with practice it'll make your laning phase with Syndra a lot stronger. Since Syndra can use her Q while moving, and I know Ari is going to use Q to try and hit me and these three range minions at the same time, I move backwards while using Q at max range to dodge her Q and harass at the same time. You don't have to do this to win lane, you can just play it safe and only go for Q harass when Ari's Q is down, but if you're confident in your mechanics, give it a shot. Now the first wave is cleared, and I'm at nearly full health and she's at 60%. Safe to say mission 1 is going well so far. Before going any further though, it's important to do a jungle check now that the side lane waves are touched. Unfortunately, the enemy bot lane is cheesing our tri brush, so they didn't leash, and the enemy top laner is already in lane, so he didn't leash. So since both laners didn't leash, I have no idea where Zack started, which means I have to play extra careful until I see him on the map for the first time, then begin to track him. Now the second wave is coming, and I'm going to do the exact same thing as before. This is around the time I should start worrying about the jungler ganking from top side since I'm guessing Zack started bot side and is now pathing top. But since Volibear put a pink down on my top side, I don't need to ward right now since Zack E wouldn't reach me unless he was in the brush right next to me. But if Volibear didn't put that ward down, this will be the time for me to do it. Ari wants to last hit this minion here, so I walk up and do the advanced Syndra Q to dodge her Q and her ass at the same time, just like before. This one is especially good because she didn't hit the whole wave this time since she's starting to feel pressured by my health lead, which means I'm getting an early start on mission 2. This is how you end the pushing pressure of a superior wave clear matchup. By understanding I can't really contest her wave clear, but I can win trades when her Q is down to gain a health advantage, I've pressured her off pushing super hard in the lane. Pay attention to my lane positioning for these next 10 seconds.
Why do you think I moved from the right side of the lane to the left side? The reason was, I saw Volibear was coming to my lane to gank, so by moving to the other side, it forces Ari to switch sides so she can't easily be harassed from my cues. When you and your enemy lane are playing on the same lane side, you're much closer and it's a lot more volatile, which Ari doesn't want right now since I have the lead, so by moving to her other side of the lane, she'll want to reposition to distance herself from me. By doing this, it has made the distance between her and Volibear a lot shorter, making the gank way easier. You should always be looking to move your enemy laner to the side of your jungler is looking to gank from. So, as Volibear starts his gank, I walk up to Ari and Q her, but I don't use my stun because I know Ari is going to flash it, so I can save it for when my Q comes up in 3 seconds. I didn't end up needing my stun anyways, but this concept can be used when you're playing LeBlanc or Ari and your jungler is ganking, just save your CC for their flash to guarantee the gank is successful. Now that she's dead, I can clear this wave and recall with a nice golden experience lead and come back to lane to really start putting on the pressure for mission 2. When I get back to lane, I have a big wave pushing to me, which means if I walk up and try to get aggressive and Zack is here and he kills me or chunks me, I completely throw my lane. So I just need to clear all this CS, ward up for Zack, then look to pressure my lead. Zack shows up for a gank bot here, so I can finally start tracking him. These next 10 seconds I'm just last hitting while the wave crashes, so we're just going to speed through that. As the wave crashes here, I hit Ari with a stun and misplay a little bit by getting hit by her charm. I should have just walked backwards, but I think she got a little lucky here. But since I know my Q cooldown is shorter than hers and that her charm is down, I just walk straight at her and hit her with another Q to win this trade. Now that I have a health lead, I can push without even using my mana on spells since she's too afraid to walk up and I don't want to try to go all in right now since I can be ganking soon, so I just use my autos to push this wave in. Now that the wave is pushed, I need to ward for Zack. So I know Zack ganked bot last, meaning he could take this path to gank me from behind or he's going to recall and clear his topside jungle. So I ward topside over the wall since that's where Zack will be ganking from and hug that side to stay far enough away from bot side ganks. As I come back to lane, I see Ari about to last hit this cannon minion and use a concept from one of my previous videos where I'm playing Rise vs Jace in a smurf game and bait Ari into using a charm here. I do this by walking straight at her with no minions in front of me, making her think I'm going to pressure her for this cannon minion, when really I'm just baiting her charm. Immediately after that, I see on the minimap Zag ganking me from bot side exactly where I thought he would be, but since I was positioned in lane this way and I just baited Ari's charm, it was really easy for me to avoid this gank. It's important to pay attention to where the jungler goes after he ganks your lane, so here I can see Zack go up towards his topside jungle. I would have known he was going there anyways because he's already ganked bot lane a while ago, meaning he hasn't cleared his topside jungle for a while, but it's still important to pay attention to that. Now I just go back to mission 2, last hitting minions as to not waste mana on them since Ari is just letting me push since I have a health lead and mana lead, and save my mana to try to harass her. For these next two waves, Ari just plays really safe and misses a lot of CS while I push the wave in so we're just going to speed through this. Now that I'm almost level 6, I can start thinking about mission 4. Do I have an experience lead over her? Yes, so I can use that to surprise her. The Q I use here is different from all the other Qs I've used during this laning phase. This Q is preparing for my level 6 all in, because I want to use that Q to stun her as I'm hitting level 6. Since I see I'm just about to level up, I use a minion dematerializer on the cannon minion to level me up and use E on the ball I put down earlier at the same time, which transitions into a QW all combo to finish off the kill and the lane. The whole process of surprising someone with a level 6 all in takes practice, but is really effective once you get it down. And you might be wondering what I would have done if I was a different champion here. So if I was Zed, I would just use my Q, W, and E to hit her and the minion that's going to level me up at the same time, then swap to the shadow and kill her. Or if I was Orianna, I would send my Q towards Ari and use my minion dematerializer on the cannon minion at the same time. It's all about surprising them, since as soon as they see you hit level 6, they're going to play extra safe. Alright, let's do a quick recap before closing this one out. For the first two waves, I harassed Ari for every CS she went for, giving me an early health lead to stop her game plan of hard pushing every wave. My jungler showed up and I moved to the opposite side of the lane to force Ari to move closer to my jungler, which landed me an easy kill. I got back to lane and avoided a Zack gank because I tracked him from his bot lane gank earlier, which let me ward and hug topside safely. 
Then I surprised Arya with a level 6 all in since I had an experience lead from before and killed her to close the lane out. Alright, that's going to be it for this one. I hope you learned a lot and I'll see you next time.